Lions, and tigers, and bears? Oh, yikes. Those three enough reasons to deter me from going camping. But nothing could stop Sandra Hughes from spending her life outdoors until the outdoors claimed her as its own. This is the story of a solo camper who's been missing since June of 2020. In 2020, right when the world was shutting down due to COVID-19, Sandra Hughes, an avid outdoors woman, moved from Maui, Hawaii, back to the mainland to California. The 54-year-old moved to where she could easily camp and hike and be outdoors, so Central California's Madera County was the ideal place. Close to Yosemite and the Sequoias, so Sandra moved to her newfound haven. She had been married and divorced twice with no children, so packing up and moving was not much of a challenge. In fact, it was somewhat of a hobby of Sandra's, living a fairly nomadic lifestyle without spending too much time in a single place. Sandra was an accountant, but she also not only studied finance in college, she also took a course in wilderness survival. She aspired to be a park ranger, but never saw it through. However, that didn't stop her from pursuing her love of the outdoors. She loved to camp as much as I love to not camp. Not long into her relocation in June of 2020, Sandra is tired from being cooped up indoors from this global pandemic and heads out into the Sierra National Forest for a solo camping trip. Camping in and of itself sounds unappealing, let alone camping alone. I am far too jumpy and anxiety ridden to go camping alone without feeling like I'm gonna be murdered at every single second. The day she sets out for her trip, she calls her family on June 26th and alerts them of her plans to go camping by herself. She lets them know that it's going to be an extended trip and she get back in touch with them in a couple weeks when she was returning home. Her family family thinks nothing of it. She has done this so many times before, but still she obeyed the cardinal rule of going out into nature by yourself and told her family where she was going. Sandra drives out and sets up camp in a secluded area near Johnson Meadows, just between Besor Road and Minarets Road. It's no surprise why anyone would go so deep into the Sierra National Forest to camp here. It's lush, green meadows that are surrounded by tall alpine trees. Up in the Sierra Mountains, it's beautiful. It's a stunning place to go spend some time in nature and to also still adhere to the CDC guidelines. Sandra pulls her silver sob sedan packed with all her gear up to the edge of the meadows. She cautiously pulled up so that she wasn't blocking the road, got out of her car, and unloaded her gear. She hikes to her ideal location and sets up her campsite. However, six days after Sandra set up camp, two hikers come across her campsite, but something was very off. An experienced camper is a tidy camper, and that was Sandra 2AT. But these campers found her site to be completely disheveled and abandoned. Her bags were emptied all over the ground, and it looked like it had been left there for quite some time with her tent collapsed on open cans of food. It was bad. Was it bad weather? Was it animals or several animals? The hikers marked the location of her campsite on their map and then when they made their way to the edge of the Sierra National Forest they got cell service and they called the police and notified them of what they just found. The Madari County Sheriff's Office arrives later that day and they witness exactly what the hikers had described. An abandoned and ramshackled campsite. The Sheriff's officers go through Sandra's stuff and find a couple of cards that ID Sandra. So they call her family to find out exactly why she would abandon her campsite site the way that she had. As I mentioned before, an experienced camper is a tidy camper, and that's exactly how her family described her. She would never have left a campsite like that due to her extreme care and compassion for the environment and the earth. They immediately begin to panic after they realize something was horribly amiss. Her family tells the sheriff's department that they hadn't talked to her since the 26th, and it sets in for all parties involved. Sandra had gone missing. They file a missing persons report, and they begin the extensive and exhaustive search for Sandra Hughes. Helicopters, rescue dogs, and tons of people are on foot doing everything they can to find Sandra or anyone who had possibly seen her. Luckily for rescuers, Sandra had distinctive blue hair, which was an easy identifier. The Sheriff's Department rescue team is talking to hikers, campers, anyone they encounter in Johnson Meadows and the areas nearby, trying to find any morsel of information leading to her rescue. Sadly, nothing new was discovered. No one had seen her. However, two days later on July 4th, two more hikers claimed to have seen her in Johnson Meadows, but their encounter with Sandra was very bizarre. They allegedly see her barefoot with jeans and a black t-shirt on, but she was just standing there, not doing anything in an attempt to be rescued, just standing there. Like one of the guards at Buckingham Palace, but without shoes or the funny hat. The hikers get back to where they parked and notice the, all the missing person signs and make the connection that the strange woman they just saw standing in the meadows was Sandra. The hikers call the sheriff's office. They rush out to where they claim to have seen her zombified out in the meadow, but she's gone and they don't find anything. On July 5th, the day after the two hikers claim to have spot Sandra standing barefoot in the field, there's finally a breakthrough in the case and they get hard evidence. Sandra's silver sob is discovered at the bottom of a ravine. The way that her car was damaged, the sheriff's department concluded that she must have been driving along at the top of this ravine where she hit a tree, causing her car to go careening down this hillside to where it was discovered. 
you know, blood was found inside her sob, so it's hard to tell if Sandra suffered any major injuries. But much like the state in which her campsite was discovered, Sandra's car was also ransacked with all kinds of her belongings strewn across the ground and inside the car, making it clear that her belongings were shuffled after the car had made its way to the bottom of the gulch. It's fair that authorities believed that she had sustained some type of injury in her accident that caused her cognitive thinking to be impaired. Could that be why she continued to travel north? Is this why her campsite and car were ransacked and destroyed? The authorities decided to leave her car where they had found it, just in case she came back to the scene for shelter, maybe to grab some more of her belongings. The sheriff's department leaves a note on her car that told Sandra to contact them, and also that her family was really worried about her. Their search for Sandra continues for the next week. Some of the rescue team had made it almost two and a half miles north of where Sandra went missing, all the way inside Yosemite National Park, adjacent to the Spotted Lake, a notoriously challenging location to find without some serious outside skills. The search team finds Sandra's sleeping bag, but of course she is nowhere to be found. The authorities are dumbfounded. She's making this impossible sojourn through the craggy California mountains without hardly any equipment at all and potentially barefoot. But if you think this story couldn't get any crazier, hold on to your cargo shorts because it only gets wilder from here. Sadly, Sandra's case goes cold and they scale back the search. The state simply couldn't afford to continue on with all their resources dedicated to this singular case. However, five miles south of Sandra's campsite in the Johnson Meadow, Victoria and Jake Gorba are driving with their three children to the Sierra National Forest. Jake pulls her truck over so that they can have their lunch before continuing up the mountain. As Jake and his wife Victoria are unloading their car, they hear their three-year-old son Caden talking to someone out the open window of the car. He's talking to someone out in the woods, but Jake and Victoria can't see anybody out there. When they ask him who he's talking to, he said, there's a woman out there and she really needs our help. They still don't see anybody. He keeps saying, trust me, mom, trust me. Victoria believes him 100%. Caden insists that there's a woman out there who's really needing their help. Quote, she's lying face down, her legs are sticking up and she's dead. Without a second thought, they packed up their stuff, got back in the car and went home. Caden also said she was wearing jeans and a black shirt and had blue hair. When Caden was questioned by authorities, he was given a bunch of photos to point out the woman he saw, and every single time, he pointed to Sandra Hughes. Sadly, Sandra Hughes has never been found, and she's still considered a missing person. If you have any information leading to the rescue of Sandra Hughes, please contact the Madera County Sheriff's Office. Well, I can add camping to my list of things that sound terrifying. What in the world do you think could have happened to Sandra? Sound off in the comments below, and do not forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.